Apple just dropped a new M4 iMac. Here's everything new, and it's quite a bit. Before I give you all the tea, if you want to keep up to date with the latest Apple news, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This new iMac is a great upgrade, perfectly suited for families, education, or business environments. I'm going to walk you through more than 10 upgrades that I found in this updated M4 model. We have to start, of course, with the M4 chip, kind of the core of this whole thing. It starts with an 8-core, same as before, but there is now a new 10-core option. That high-end model has four high-performance cores and six high-efficiency cores. In use, Apple says that makes it 70% faster than the M1 version. What I think is more important is how it stacks up to the last-gen M3, and fortunately, it still shows a 30% boost in performance, likely thanks to those two additional cores. This probably isn't the only Mac with the new M4 chip. It sounds like we'll also be getting a new MacBook Pro and Mac Mini 2. If you want to learn more about those, I've linked a video here with those updates when they come out. But the new M4 unlocks a lot of other benefits too that I'm going to talk about throughout this video. Starting with faster memory bandwidth. It now supports up to 120 gigabytes per second from 100 gigabytes per second, so 20% quicker. Not only is that bandwidth improved, but for the first time, it finally starts with 16 gigs of memory standard. That's all the comments were on the original M3 iMac video, so I know this is going to make a lot of people happy. No longer does it start with just 8 gigs, and I'm guessing this is what's going to come to the other new Mac models too. Things like multitasking are going to be much better here with this model. Lastly, on the memory front, before it was capped at 24 gigs, so you could do 8, 16, or 24. Now, since it starts at 16, the higher end model can go all the way up to 32. As a side note, storage is still capped at 2 terabytes, though it's a desktop. You can easily add plenty of external storage to this, connect them to the back, whether they're desktop drives or, or, or portable drives that just literally connect to the back of the machine. There's a lot of options. When using the new iMac, you'll still be looking at a 24-inch display. Apple has not increased the resolution, the size, the, the, the brightness, but you can opt for a new nano-textured version. I do like this, especially if you're in a well-lit space, you kind of struggle with glare a bit. You do lose a tiny bit of sharpness, so maybe it's not recommended for pixel-peeping photo editing, but in general, this should and does increase legibility, especially in bright light based on my past experience with them. On the top of the display is a similar 1080p camera, but Apple says the actual megapixels of the camera have increased. It's now a 12 megapixel shooter. You'll get 1080p video, but it supports desk view now. This is that feature where it like shows a top-down shot of like your hands on your desk while on a call. It's super helpful if you're trying to demo something, you're trying to draw something, anything like that versus like awkwardly holding things up to the camera. I've used this quite a bit, but I want to know from you guys, uh, have you tried this before? And if you have, let me know what you used it for down below in the comments. Another benefit of the new M4 chip is support for additional displays. You can now connect two external displays at 6K on that high-end model. Best of all, though, you can connect an 8K display at 120 hertz. Not even my 16-inch M3 Max and MacBook Pro can do that. I mean, we're getting new MacBook Pro soon, but it's crazy that this family-friendly M4 iMac can do this, and my specked out year-old powerhouse laptop cannot. The last benefit of the M4 chip is going to be ports. Apple is taking full advantage of those Thunderbolt lanes here. On the M3 version, you could either get one with two Thunderbolt ports, or you can get the high-end version that had two Thunderbolt uh, and two USB 3 Type-C ports. Now, that high-end version has straight four Thunderbolt ports. To me, this is huge. First, it was so un-Apple to have two different types of ports back there. From the front, you can't even tell which is the USB and which is Thunderbolt. They have the same, you know, connector, the same shape. You can't even feel the difference. On the, there's only like a tiny lightning indicator that separates the two, so you know which is which. So you have to turn your computer around to double check. I also think it just allows you to connect more high-end peripherals without having to worry about daisy chaining. Some devices don't support daisy chaining. Um, this is just overall so much better. Also, again, for the record here, my MacBook Pro doesn't even have four Thunderbolt ports. It has three. 
Yes, it has like the HDMI output and it has like the MagSafe for charging, so you can kind of get around it, but I, I would take more, more Thunderbolt ports. I know this is a huge one for everyone out there, but USB-C peripherals. That's right, Apple has finally moved the Magic Mouse, Magic Trackpad, and Magic Keyboard to USB-C. You'll get a color-matched pair in the box. One little odd note here is you have to pick either the mouse or the trackpad before you could opt to get both of them. It cost more, but you could get both of them with the keyboard. Now you have to pick one or the other. So a little bit of a buying difference here. There's both a number pad and a non-number pad version of the keyboard. And yes, you can buy these on your own. So if, if you're not buying the new iMac, you can still upgrade to these peripherals. I wish they changed more about them though, because they're still basically the same otherwise. The keyboard got a little tweaked with some of the icons being relocated and the, the FN designator being removed from the globe key. Uh, I also would have liked the inverted T design for the, note, for the arrow keys, but uh, no, we didn't get that. It also seems that the Magic Mouse <laughs> charges on its back just as before, for better, for worse. What a missed opportunity, kind of in my opinion, for some design changes or new features here, not just blanket moving to USB-C. All of these new changes come in refreshed colors. They're bolder and more vibrant than before. Shockingly, the pink is actually pink. The front of them is still a little pastel for my taste, but overall, I think this is a big improvement. The new M4 IMAX are available to order now, starting at the same price point as before, $12.99. We also have the Apple Insider deals guide, price guide uh, that we've been working on. It's linked in the description, but it's gonna have the absolute best prices for the new M4 iMac, as well as all of Apple's other new Macs. So keep an eye on that because we update it constantly with more deals as we find them. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of the new M4 iMac, and otherwise, catch you in the next video.